If it goes ahead, the recently approved Carmichael coal mine in central Queensland will be the biggest in the southern hemisphere. Environmentalists say shipping traffic in the Great Barrier Reef World Heritage Area is set almost to double. While this project will load its coal directly from port, an Australian firm in Queensland has asked for approval to use barges to load coal ship to ship in the middle of the reef area. It claims transshipping coal at sea would protect the reef from the environmental damage associated with dredging ports. Mark Willisey reports from Hay Point in North Queensland. For Peter Dallas, retirement means a boat, a fishing reel and the clear waters of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. After toiling for 35 years on coal loaders and drag lines, he's enjoying his time in the sun. Today fishing with his old mate Tom Liddell, another former coal worker. We actually bought a home here in 1975 because we loved the area, good fishing, uh, the beaches were clean, uh, everything was sort of pristine and uh, and over the years things have changed somewhat. Before he retired, Peter Dallas helped to build Hay Point, one of the nation's most important coal terminals. Now, Mitchell Ports wants to build a new terminal at Hay Point and to barge coal out to sea for loading onto giant ships. In 35 years I've seen most sides of the mining industry. The transshipping proposal to me is a pie-in-the-sky scheme, totally unnecessary absolutely ridiculous and it is fraught with danger. Hay Point is one of the biggest coal ports in the world with the capacity to ship 130 million tonnes every year and if Mitchell Ports gets its way that could increase by 30 million tonnes annually but it will mean taking ship to ship coal loading into the Great Barrier Reef for the first time. This is how Mitchell Ports envisages its so-called trans-shipping process working. Barges loaded with coal would head about 30 kilometres out to sea, where they dock with a futuristic loader known as a trans-shipper. The coal would then be loaded via conveyors onto the export ship. Local environmentalists are worried. Increased ship traffic increases the risk of ship accidents um, and spillages of coal dust into the marine environment. Um, and there's been some work done showing that we already have very high levels of toxic coal dust as a result of the existing port facilities here. The company argues this proposal would minimise the need for environmentally damaging port dredging. But in its submission to the Federal Environment Department, it does acknowledge there would be what it calls a minimal impact on threatened and migratory marine species. This fella has got this proposal operating out in open water where we get monstrous swells, so the unballast ship is going to be rocking, the trans ship is going to be rocking, the barge alongside is going to be rocking, it's all going to be rock and roll and we're going to end up with coal in barrier reef waters and no doubt nobody knows where it goes when it falls in the water. Port developers, the Mitchell Group, are planning to build a coal port in Keppel Bay, operating in the Great Barrier Reef World Heritage Area. In response to Mitchell Port's trans-shipping plans, the activist group GetUp filmed a coal trans-shipping operation in Indonesia, which it says has devastated the local environment. That's actually taking place in a river which is probably a calmer environment than what we have here. We have very strong trade winds here. Um, which obviously blows coal dust from the barges um, and you know, will result in more coal dust in the marine environment. Last year, a similar proposal by Mitchell Ports was abandoned after meeting stiff opposition. In this internal document obtained by the ABC, the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority considered the project further south to have the potential to have unacceptable and high-risk impacts, in particular on flatback turtle and snubfin dolphin populations. It highlighted seven risks with an extreme consequence rating and warned about noise, the loss of habitat and a depletion of prey resources caused by dredging and pollution. In an interview with 7.30 from Paris, UNESCO's World Heritage Marine Coordinator raised questions about the trans-shipping proposed off Hay Point. 
it's common sense that when there is more ships passing through a particular area that there is also more potential for damages to the reef, there's also more potential for collision. While particularly concerned about port dredging, UNESCO also wants more information about this trans shipping plan. So whenever any activity uh, will impact or could impact potentially on those exceptional values for which it is inscribed on the World Heritage List, then that needs to be raised. Those issues need to be addressed and we, it is our role as UNESCO, as being a standard setting organization as well, to raise those issues with the government. And we'll call you back. Okay. David Caracciolo has fished the waters off this coast since he was a small boy. He now sells the region's seafood all around the world. David Caracciolo knows that the coal industry is vital for the local economy. He's worried that with barges operating 24-7, the ship-to-ship coal loading proposal could shut down the region's most lucrative fishing ground. The major concern is there that they, they may put an exclusion area around the whole area. Now, if that happens, that'll stop all the, the prawn trawling fleet from working that area which produces probably 90% of McKay's king prawn and it would be 70 to 80% of, of McKay's prawn economy. If this proposal but this project down, will also have impacts on land because Mitchell Ports would need to build coal conveyors and a huge terminal within a couple of hundred metres of Peter Dallas's home in the hamlet of Half Tide. That means a lot of extra dust, a lot of extra noise, especially at night time and uh, all this impacts on uh, community lifestyles, your community health, coal dust isn't good for you. The people of Half Tide can see the future because what's being proposed near them has already been built right next to the village of Louisa Creek on the other side of Hay Point, causing an exodus of residents. We had about 170 or odd so houses here at the time and you know it was, it was really good. Yeah, but now it's, we're, down, we're down to around about 50, and not all of them have got people in them. Yeah, so it's, it's wasting away, really, from the coal, from the effects of the coal industry. Yeah, a bit of, bit of forward time, so I can run this out. All right, we got it. Back out on the water, Peter Dallas and his fishing partner, Tom Liddell, are still waiting for a nibble on the end of their line. For these former coal workers, the fight has just begun against the proposed ship-to-ship -ship coal loading proposal. Because while Mitchell Ports wants it up and running in about four years, it still needs approval at state and federal level and from the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. I've got a five-year-old grandson who comes down. We just had him down for the school holidays and uh, he loves the beach already. He's only five, loves fishing and uh, I'm thinking to myself, if we don't make a stand on all this, where is it going to end? Seven thirty arranged an interview with Mitchell Ports Executive Director Ben King, but he cancelled the appointment. Mark Willisey reporting.